Okay, um, we're going to start uh, today a rather abstract and in some sense tedious chapter, which is second quantization, which is however um, useful in a few contests of theoretical physics. So maybe it's a good idea to see it uh, sometimes. Uh, it is useful when you have to do calculation or theories for more than one electron, okay? For two, you can really go along with the first quantization treatment as we have done last time for helium, okay? You write your Slater determinant, there are just a few, two terms essentially, and uh, uh, two terms they can be handled, no problem. But when the number of particles starts to be large, uh, working with those um, objects that we introduced, so sum over permutation of uh, objects, is quite uh, heavy. I mean, uh, it becomes very, very involved. So let me remind you the, the, the problem. So you have some Hamiltonian, okay, which is sum over uh, several particles. For instance, uh, when we discussed helium last time, it was P square over twice the mass, minus z e square over ri, okay? This would be um, the part in which the electron interacts with a common nucleus, okay? So there is a common nucleus of charge z, and you have several electrons. So maybe I'm trying to describe an atom, okay? But more generic than just helium. Hmm? And then uh, I would need to add a term like this, sum over i different from j, e square over ri minus rj, okay? So if I was able to solve a problem like this mm. for any n, then I would generate the periodic table essentially, okay? So that's quite a, an important problem in some sense. So how one adventures in doing these things? Uh, well, we said one thing is that the states, okay, being states of fermions, have to be correctly uh, um, anti-symmetrized. So you do not work with product state or better yet, you sum over many permutation of product states with the appropriate sign. Hmm? So typically, for instance, you would write uh, Slater determinant states. So well, let me repeat, you take a single particle basis of your choice, okay? For instance, hydrogen-like orbitals in the present case, but there are people who like uh, working with plane waves, even for to describe molecules and things like this. So it's a, rather an arbitrary choice at this point. As long as the basis is complete, you can describe any problem with any basis, okay? So let me just indicate with alpha. So this is the basis set uh, for, to describe the Hilbert space of a single particle. Obviously, then we want to describe uh, Hilbert space of many particles, H2, Hn, and we said that what we can do is, for instance, to write states like this, mm, equal to the sum over all permutations mm, of minus 1 to the p, um, alpha p1, 1, alpha pn, n, mm, and here, in order to normalize everything, I just put one over square root of n factor, okay? I have specialized the thing to fermions, okay? For today's lecture, I will just pursue fermions only. Next time, I will uh, uh, tell you the, 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 the few things that you have to change if you want to deal with bosons, okay? Well, one obvious thing is that there is no sign here. This might seem like a simplification, which it is. Uh, however, Pauli principle is not there, so more than one time the labels can appear in the thing. Uh, also, the normalization has to be taken care of in a special way. So there are a few changes here and there. Uh, but the main changes is that the basic objects that we will introduce, which are, just to anticipate a little bit, creation operators and destruction operators, okay? We will see that for fermions, uh, you do have rules like the anti-commutator 
of A and A dagger, okay, which is something like this, okay, is equal to one. While for bosons, uh, you have the more uh, uh, known rule to you, perhaps the, the fact that the commutator, okay, is equal to one, okay? So this is the boson case, and this is the fermion case. So we'll see this thing uh, next time. This is, by the way, uh, what we have already seen uh, for uh, the A and A dagger in the harmonic oscillator, except for now the presence of an extra label alpha, because now we have a basis that uh, is, um, I mean, uh, labeled by a certain alpha, and you will introduce an A dagger for each alpha, okay? Not a single one, but one for every element of the basis, okay? But for the rest, the, 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 the basic objects that you introduce is pretty much similar to the A and A dagger you have worked uh, on in the harmonic oscillator, okay? For fermions, we will introduce a similar objects, but there is a, a crucial difference, and the crucial difference is that the basic things are um, uh, related by what is called an anti-commutator, okay? You see with this um, curly brackets, I indicate exactly the, the thing that is upstairs. So not the commutator, but with the, the commutator with the wrong sign, with a plus in the middle, okay? And, okay, and we will see that the similar thing happens, well, uh, we'll see in a second, okay? So this is just in perspective what we will do today and, and next time. But let me continue with uh, a bit of perspective. Why do we want to introduce these objects to describe, uh, to describe the, the theory? Well, it would be very nice, okay, if rather than having this cumbersome sum over permutation, I might simply uh, worry about which labels are there, okay? So in some sense, uh, since the labels are in the end summed over, I mean, and shuffled and permuted all over, the important information there is which ones are present and which are not, okay? So the, the mere uh, presence or absence of a label is somehow the important uh, feature of the state, not so much the fact that alpha one is associated to particle one or alpha three with particle three, because as you know, uh, really, everybody shares labels, okay? So it's the fact that a certain label is present or not, the important thing. So we'll try to describe this in a more formal way by saying that we obtain the state by creating, okay, uh, with this operator, creation operator A alpha, the labels on the vacuum. Well, this is, I mean, we will see it in a second, just to give you the perspective. Hmm? So the state, in the end, will be written in a simple way, just product of a few A daggers applied to a vacuum, okay? Which is much simpler than some over permutation things, just a product, a single one. Hmm? However, in order to be correctly anti-symmetric, obviously, these objects, which appear as a simple products, have to be subtle in when you permute them, okay? So for instance, if you exchange two of them, obviously you must have a minus sign, okay? So in some sense, what is non-trivial in their nature is the fact that A, say, alpha um, one, A dagger alpha two must be equal to minus A dagger alpha two, A dagger alpha one, okay? So if you exchange them, you get a minus sign. They do not commute, they anti-commute, okay? And this minus sign is what you need to make the state correctly uh, anti-symmetrized for fermions, okay? This is one feature. Um, the second feature is that you will need to express not only the states in terms of these objects. By the way, this way of writing states and operators is called first, first quantization, okay? First quantization. I mean, it's the standard the standard approach, okay? So when you say I write it in first quantization, it means I write a later determinant wave function, I write 
an operator like sum over n and so on and so forth, okay? The second quantization involves these creatures here, okay, which somehow are able to create a state and make it already uh, nicely anti-symmetric. Anti but there is still, yes? In front, this commutator for first order, is it one or? Which one? If, if the two things are, I, I mean, this is the anti-commutator between two A daggers. This is the anti-commutator between two an A and an A dagger. It's, a, it's, it's, yeah, with the same alpha. If it is different alpha, you will get zero there. Uh, we'll see them, I mean, it's just to give you a, a glimpse of what is going to come, okay? Uh, so not only I need a way of writing the states, I need also a way of writing the Hamiltonian, for instance, or any operator, because after all, it's all a business of calculating expectation values of things, okay? So I do need to express both the states and the operators in terms of the new actors, okay? So we will need both, not only the states. Hmm? And we will see that there is a way of writing, for instance, this piece here, okay, in terms of, of them, okay? But wait for a second before we will see the solution of this problem. Okay, so this is the, what we want to do, to introduce new objects which formally simplify the writing of states, but obviously, I mean, they do not have to change the, the numbers, okay? So if I calculate a certain expectation value of this Hamiltonian into, say, a given Slater determinant, well, the, the new way of writing should provide exactly the same number. So it's kind of a mapping. Okay, you, uh, you, you, you write things in a, in a new way, but in such a way that the numbers come out to be exactly the same, okay? You don't want to ch certainly introduce new physics. All right, um, okay, let me, let me just um, start slowly. So, for every alpha in um, the uh, basis, okay, you can always think of introducing an operator, A dagger alpha, which does the following. Uh, well, formally, you introduce actually two things. You introduce a state, uh, some reference state, which you call vacuum, okay? a state where there are actually no particles. Hmm? And an operator, A dagger alpha, which creates a particle in state alpha, okay? So according to my old way of writing, this would be just a single particle state alpha, okay? The state of the basis. Is this clear? So each alpha is obtained, so here I have, uh, here I have, um, all the states, okay, in my, in my uh, Hilbert space, okay, of a single particle. Well, I take a reference state, which I call the vacuum, and I obtain each one of them by applying this operator, A dagger alpha, okay, creation operator. Well, this is just, uh, I mean, a formal, a formal object, obviously. Doesn't mean much at, up to now. Well, obviously, that's not enough. We want to be able to describe states with many particles. And formally, you, what you can say is, suppose that I have already defined states like this. Then what I define is that A dagger alpha is simply a state of that form where there is alpha in the first position, okay? Uh, so now A dagger alpha is defined not only by acting on a reference state that I invented, but also by acting on a given anti-symmetrized state. So A dagger alpha does two things. First of all, it creates the label alpha. You see, alpha is there, is not there. Hmm? Second, it makes the resulting state anti-symmetric. Okay, this is um, um, some kind of magic. So we have to understand what it really 
uh, does the, the, that, that, that object, OK? So this is a kind of uh, definition, OK? A dagger alpha is an operator which creates the single particle states out of a reference vacuum and also is able to add one label to an already anti-symmetrized state by making it fully anti-symmetric, OK? Now, which properties do the A dagger alpha so defined should have? Well, first of all, you realize by, in, by mere induction hmm, that evidently A alpha 1, A alpha n is simply obtained by creating one by one the A dagger uh, that you see, OK? So you do um, A dagger alpha 1, A dagger alpha 2, up to A dagger alpha n on the vacuum, right? You, you realize that this is the induction mechanism that is there. You first create particle alpha n, OK? Then you add uh, particle alpha n minus 1, and you anti-symmetrize, and you get, uh, OK? So you get first this. Then with the next one, you get alpha n minus 1, alpha n, and then so, so on and so forth until you get alpha 1, alpha n, which is what we, what we want, OK? So this is the process by which the operators increase the labels. Hmm? Now, evidently, as I discussed a, a moment ago, these A daggers hmm, are, um, I mean, they have certain uh, commutation properties that are pretty special because this state hmm, is totally anti-symmetric. Okay? In particular, if I exchange two labels in the state, I should obtain, for instance, a minus sign, OK? So suppose that I, I consider now alpha 2, alpha 1, alpha 3, alpha n, OK? Where here I have alpha 1, alpha 2, OK? So on one hand, I know that this must be equal to minus alpha 1, alpha 2, OK? According to what we have said um, in the preceding lectures, OK? On the other hand, the first object is equal to A dagger alpha 2, A dagger alpha 1, A dagger alpha 3, and so on until you have A dagger alpha n. Mm -hmm. While the second is equal to uh, A dagger alpha 1, A dagger alpha 2, A dagger alpha 3, and so on, OK? And there is an extra minus sign. So this is equal to minus that. OK? Oops, I did it wrong here. So you see that these two objects are the same. OK? But what you have here and what you have here uh, have to match. OK? So immediately you notice that a, a simple permutation of two of them mm, costs you a minus sign. All right? So you conclude the first thing is that A dagger alpha 1, A dagger alpha 2 huh, is equal to minus A dagger alpha 2, A dagger alpha 1. In other words, the order in which they are applied matters, OK? And it matters with the minus sign. Another way of writing this is that if you bring this on the, on the first uh, hand side, it becomes a plus. Huh? And this becomes 0. A further way of writing is to introduce the symbol of anti-commutator. So the anti-commutator of two operators is AB plus BA rather than uh, the minus with the commutator. And you see immediately that this is simply that the anti-commutator of A alpha 1 and A alpha 2 should be equal to 0. OK? So, the fermionic creation operators are such that they anti-commute with each other. Here, alpha 1 and alpha 2 are two arbitrary labels, obviously. So all of them have to commute. All right? OK. In particular, obviously, this already 
implies that if alpha 1 and alpha 2 are the same, hmm, you see immediately that this implies that a dagger, so suppose that they are the same label, alpha, a dagger alpha, a dagger alpha is equal to minus a dagger alpha, a dagger alpha. Hmm? So you see when the two labels are the same, this operator creating twice the same label is equal to minus itself, it means that it must be zero. Okay, so Pauli principle is again recovered, no surprise, eh, in this scheme. Okay, so the anti commutation embodies the change of sign and Pauli principle in a straightforward way. Okay, so this is uh, uh, simple. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, I'll just make a mention here uh, if you had bosons rather than fermions, what would change is, that is this minus sign. There's no minus sign there. And therefore, for uh, bosons, I anticipate, you get here the correct minus sign and therefore the correct, uh, say, anti-commutator. So this becomes the commutator now. A dagger alpha uh, 1 commutator A dagger alpha 2 is equal to 0. Okay? This is just to make clear that the change in this case is very, very simple commutators instead of anti-commutators, okay? Obviously, there's no Pauli principle. You can have the same label twice. Nothing forbids that. Okay. Uh, how do we proceed? That's, that's obviously only the first, uh, the first step. Hmm? Uh, a dagger uh, seems to allude to the fact that there is an A. Hmm? seems to be the adjoint of something. Hmm? Now, what would be the action of A? A is clearly a distraction operator. A dagger creates, A distracts, hmm? destroys. Well, uh, the, the way to define it properly is, uh, you remember always that we did it when we discussed Hermitian operators and uh, co uh, Hermitian conjugate uh, operators. The, the, the idea is the following. If I have some operator here, okay, some A alpha acting on a certain state psi 1, okay, and you calculate a matrix element with another state psi 2, you know that this must be exactly identical to having the A dagger appearing here on the left, okay? So this is, in fact, a nice way of defining what A alpha does, okay? A alpha is that operator such that when acting on the right on a state psi 1 does exactly the same thing that his partner A dagger alpha does, okay, acting on the left, okay? So this is a very natural thing, okay? So let us see what properties A alpha have. Well, <clears throat> first of all, you see immediately that A alpha acting on the vacuum, on the reference state, this time must give us zero. Hmm? Let's see this first simple property. This is the zero, not the, not the, not the vacuum, okay? It's, it's just a standard zero, the Hilbert space zero, it's zero. Okay, how do I prove this first thing? Well, let me just do it here. I just um, use this, okay? Now, uh, let me put any state psi 2 there. Mm -hmm. Now, this means uh, A dagger to the left, psi 2 with a vacuum. Now, obviously, this state here has whatever particle are there. Mm -hmm. Psi 2 might be a state with, say, n particles. This has n plus 1 particles, okay? On the left, there's nothing, just a zero, okay? So, the most you can go down in number of particles is when this has no particles. But even then, this is one particle in alpha, okay? So obviously this thing will always be zero, whatever psi two you take, okay? So it is an obvious thing. You cannot destroy things where there is nothing to destroy, okay? Essentially this is what this uh, equality is telling you, okay? So A alpha, unlike A dagger, destroys the vacuum, while A dagger creates 
a particle with alpha on the back. Mm. Now let's consider uh, more, the, the more uh, interesting thing. Suppose that I have A alpha acting on a certain state, alpha 1, alpha n, and suppose that alpha is not present in this list. Okay? So we'll do several cases. There are essentially two possible cases, or perhaps three. Alpha is, never, is not present there. Second case, alpha is present there in first position. Third, more general case, alpha is present there in a generic position. Okay? We will see uh, these three cases in turn. Okay, so let us start with the first. So alpha does not belong to the list of labels alpha 1, alpha n. Okay? Very well. Then let's use our, um, so now the, uh, this CI1 is simply alpha 1, alpha n, no longer the vacuum. Hmm? And this is alpha 1, alpha n. Okay? So uh, the action of A alpha on this object must be exactly the same as the action of A dagger there. Hmm? So suppose that psi 2, hmm, is some state like, uh, well, how many particles there must be in Psi 2? There are n particles there, so n minus 1 particle must be in Psi 2, uh, and one more is created by alpha, okay? So let me write Psi, uh, um, uh, psi 2, okay? I write it as alpha prime, say, uh, let me call it just 2, alpha prime n. I start from 2 so that I remember clearly that there are um, uh, one less rather than 1. I could start from 1 and get n minus 1, but it would be more handy to start from 2 and end up. I put the prime because they are generally different from the alpha that I have on the right. Okay, they are new labels in number of n minus 1. Okay, so that's any generic psi 2. Okay, now what is this object here? Well, the object there is A dagger uh, psi 2. So it's a state that is, um, sorry, alpha, alpha prime 2, alpha prime n. Now you understand why I got uh, the first position I put 2, so that I can put the A dagger immediately in the first position there. Okay? Good. So this is obvious what it is is this state, okay? This is, sorry, I don't want to put this. This was the previous case. Hmm? Okay, so this object here is equal to alpha, alpha 2 prime, alpha n prime, scalar product with alpha mm, uh, 1, alpha 2, alpha n, okay? Now, you immediately see that the, the labels that you have here on the left are certainly never equal to those labels. Even if the alpha prime are chosen in such a way that they are essentially the labels that you have there, you see that this label alpha uh, is never appearing on the right, okay? So these are two states in which one of the labels on the left differs, okay, not only in the position, it differs because it's not present in any position on the right, okay? You can prove, well, by uh, simple arguments, simple, I mean, just using this expression, okay, that whenever two states, okay, you take the scalar product with alpha prime and alpha n prime, two states, are such that even a single variable there differs, a single label differs from the other one, okay, you get zero, okay? The only case where you do not get zero is when these labels here are just a permutation of the others, okay? Permutation is irrelevant, you know, it gives only a sign at most. Huh? But the difference even in a single label is such that one term in each single sum uh, 
will get you a zero overlap because of orthogonality, okay? So it's a very simple thing to prove. Two later determinants, which differ even by a single uh, label, which is present in one case and not in the other, will be orthogonal, okay? And therefore, this, okay, is certainly zero. In other words, if you try to destroy the label alpha in a state which has no alpha, mm, you get zero. Good. This is reasonable. Okay. Second, suppose that alpha is there, and suppose it is there in first position. So I do now the case alpha belongs to the alpha 1, alpha n, and in fact, let me assume that it is in the first position. So the, the labels here are alpha, alpha 2, alpha n, okay? So it's just in the first position. Then I want to show to you that this time is not zero, the result. This time, the result will be an anti-symmetrized state where essentially the first label disappeared, okay? So to remind you that there was a label and I have just uh, make it disappear, I put the alpha with the hat on top. Hat, hat means it's not there, it's like a cross, okay? Alpha 2, alpha n. Okay, so let me just show this to you. It's a very similar uh, uh, proof. So what I do is now I have alpha, alpha 2, okay, uh, alpha, alpha 2, okay. So on the left I have alpha, alpha 2 prime, and on the right I have alpha, alpha 2, okay. So you realize that this now can be uh, dif uh, um, different from zero. Hmm? Certainly alpha is there and there. Uh, when this will be different from zero? When these labels here are just the permutation of these labels here. Okay? So this element here is generally speaking uh, equal to one or minus one, depending, uh, depending on, the, on, on the order in which this alpha prime, okay, are with respect to the uh, alphas, right? So um, in particular, if the alpha two, okay, alpha n are exactly the ones that you have there, then there is no order whatsoever that you need to worry about this object is exactly one, okay? So you realize that um, this is uh, exactly um, uh, somehow the same, the same thing as not having alpha uh, at all, okay? So in some sense, if I drop alpha from the list, okay, uh, the resulting matrix element are exactly the same. I should not care only about this diagonal one. I should really put the uh, prime here. For the, the things that are different, I get obviously not one, but I get, um, I get minus one uh, to the appropriate permutation, okay? Mm -hmm. So if I have, um, if I have, there, there are really three possibilities. One, they are exactly the same they are just a permutation or they differ in some case where I would get zero, okay? And you realize that this is exactly the same thing as just dropping the alpha from the list. Because even in that case, I would have either one, a certain permutation, or zero if, uh, if uh, the, the, these elements are not the permutation of that, okay? All right. In other words, this is telling you the following. Let me write it a bit more clear. This is telling you that if I have A alpha acting on a state that is A dagger alpha, first position, then A dagger alpha 2, A dagger alpha n, then destroying alpha after you have immediately created it, it's like dropping alpha what? All together, okay? So the result is just this. Uh, however, 
the most general case is the following. Alpha is present, maybe, mm -hmm. but not in first position, OK? So for instance, suppose that alpha is pres present at a certain position, alpha i, OK? So uh, from the list uh, there, mm -hmm. uh, there is a certain element where which matches alpha exactly, OK? So alpha is in position alpha i. Then what you are calculating is this, a alpha, a dagger alpha 1, a dagger alpha 2, a dagger alpha i, a dagger alpha n to the vacuum. Hmm? Now, how can you proceed now applying what we just learned? Well, it's very simple. You have to bring this here first, because I know that this is equal to alpha. OK, so I can pay a certain number of minus signs. How many? OK, in order to bring this to the first position. I have to pay a certain number i minus 1 of minus signs. OK, so I have minus 1 to the i minus 1. And in this way, I can bring this there. OK, so to make things perfectly uh, clear, this object here is exactly identical to minus 1 to the i minus 1, a dagger a alpha, a dagger alpha i, hmm? a dagger alpha 1, a dagger alpha 2. Now, nothing in position i. Hmm? And again, a dagger starting again until n. OK? So you see that now, since alpha i is equal to alpha, I can apply the previous rule, OK? And I get these two going away, OK? So the rule is, if alpha is not present, you get 0. If alpha is present in a certain position, you can simply drop that creation operator. But you have to remember that there is a possible sign to pay, which is minus 1 to the number of jumps that you have to do to reach the creation operator that you want to destroy. OK? So practically, the, the problem is very, very, very simple. You have a certain thing to destroy. And you have certain A dagger, alpha 1, alpha i, alpha n, OK? Now, if alpha is not present there, you can essentially travel all the way to the vacuum, and you can use this, OK? And there is nothing that uh, uh, really uh, saves this from being 0. Otherwise, uh, if one of the labels is equal to alpha, OK? There is a certain number of elements that you have to jump over, OK? These elements will give you a factor of minus 1 to the i minus 1. But after having reached the right position, you kill uh, uh, your creation operator with the same label, OK? And the resulting object is a state which has a hole in that alpha, OK? Is this clear? So to make. Um, Um, to make it to make it again uh, uh, clear, I mean, with the notation, I should write something like a alpha, alpha one, um, alpha i, alpha n, okay, is equal to minus one to the i minus one, alpha one, alpha i missing, hmm? alpha n, okay, if alpha is equal to alpha i. Otherwise, you get 0. OK? So this is essentially the whole story about A alpha. Destroys the vacuum and destroy, if present, a label of the same type in the list, OK? By just making, uh, I mean, extirpating it huh, with a possible uh, payment of a minus sign. Okay.
Now, with this, we are now ready to prove all the possible um, um, commutation rules that we need, OK? So let's see. Huh? Here? Should I what? Yes. I'm canceling alpha i. OK, so a alpha applied to this state where alpha i is present and equal to alpha will give me a state with one less particle the alpha i is here missing. OK, this means missing. Hmm? Hmm? And a certain sign, which is the number of labels that are just before the missing one. OK, that's uh, the notation. OK, so let's see how I can now conclude on uh, not just this commutation rule, but all the others that, in principle, you can write. So let's see. First of all, what about A? So I, uh, the first uh, rule that I wrote there is A dagger alpha 1 anti-commutator with A dagger alpha 2 should be zero, OK? We said that this is due to Pauli principle and to, all right. What about A alpha 1 and A alpha 2, OK? Now, not A dagger, but A, anti-commutator. Well, you realize that essentially, by taking the emission conjugate of this rule, you get always this rule, right? You can prove this with the usual, I mean, A are nothing but A daggers after, uh, acting on the left in some sense. So whatever A dagger does, A will do, OK? So if A dagger anti-commutes, the A anti-commutes as well. The crucial and uh, more difficult point is what about A and A dagger together, OK? So what about, for instance, A alpha 1 a dagger alpha 2 anti-commutator. That is non-trivial, OK? And in fact, I will try to prove to you that this is equal to delta alpha 1 alpha 2. In other words, it's 0 if the two labels do not coincide, and 1 if they do coincide, OK? So this is the non-trivial object that we will need to prove. And we have all the ingredients to, to show this. OK? Let's see. Let us, um, let us, start, uh, let us start with the <clears throat> let us start with the case where um, alpha is different from alpha prime, OK? So suppose that uh, these two are different, sorry. Actually, let me call it alpha and alpha prime, OK? Like that, rather than alpha 1 and alpha 2. It's the same thing, obviously, OK? So this is alpha, alpha prime, alpha, alpha prime. OK, so let's see. Suppose that the two are different, then I need to evaluate um, a alpha A dagger alpha prime on one side and A dagger alpha prime A alpha, OK? I want to prove that these two things differ by a minus sign simply, OK? If I prove that this is equal to minus that, then obviously as a result of that I will get that their anti-commutator is equal to 0, OK? Let's see. Um, if I have this object, 
Mm -hmm. uh, let me uh, act with this operator on any state, for instance, a state alpha 1, alpha n. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing. I know that alpha prime, in order for this result to be different from 0, must not be in this list, right? I can never try to create two times the same label. So first thing, in order for this to be uh, different from 0, you must have alpha prime not belonging to the list alpha 1, alpha n. OK? Clear? Otherwise, no. Uh, we said that if I try to do a dagger alpha 1 on a state that has alpha 1 already contained, OK? Since this would be something like a dagger alpha 1, a dagger alpha 1, OK? The product of these two, since it must be anti-symmetric, we, we, we said it here, OK? So this must be 0, OK? So this, I can never create two times the same label, OK? So this is what I'm telling you now, OK? Alpha prime should not be in the list. Otherwise, I would create it twice, all right? So alpha prime is not in the list. OK, so this is Pauli principle. Very good. Now, if it is not in the list, I add it. So this is equal to A alpha, alpha prime in first position, and then I have alpha 1, alpha n. OK? Then I have to destroy it. Well, in order to destroy it, it must be present in some position. Otherwise, I would get 0. It cannot be the first position, by the way. Uh, it must be some other position, OK? So there must be some position here, alpha i, mm, mm, where um, so there are two possibilities. One, alpha is not, so I should distinguish, really. Alpha is not present, so is not belonging to the list, alpha 1, alpha n. Mm, then, obviously, uh, I would get 0. Mm, because I cannot destroy something which is not present. By the way, alpha prime doesn't help because alpha prime is different from, um, from alpha, OK? So I, I mean, if alpha is not in this list, would not also be in the complete list where you add alpha prime, OK? Good. So if this is true, then you get 0. OK? Uh, if, on the contrary, alpha is equal to some alpha i, hmm? so this is equal to some alpha i, then what you have is a sign which is minus 1 to the i minus 1 plus 1. OK? i minus 1 comes from, from here because there are i minus 1 things before, and there is an extra 1 because there was a new addition there. OK? So, uh, these are the two possible results that you get. What about the other? Well, the other does the following. I have to operate on this object. Okay? So let's see. If alpha is not present, so first position, you get 0. Alpha not belonging to the list, you get 0. If, on the contrary, alpha belongs, and it is equal to some alpha i, OK, so second possibility, alpha equal to alpha i, what do you get? You get, essentially, uh, a state in which uh, alpha 1 is there, alpha i is missing, alpha n is there, times a sign that is minus 1 to the i minus 1. But then I have still this, a dagger alpha prime, OK, which I put again in first position. So I get minus 1 to the i minus 1, alpha prime, alpha 1, alpha i missing, alpha n. Is this clear? OK? So the difference between these two objects, just to summarize, that in one case, I first added the, the label, OK, and then I tried to 
uh, destroy the other one, which brought a number of uh, uh, signs that is i minus 1 plus 1, really, because there was a first object in front that I added. In the second case, the first object in front comes only after having destroyed, and therefore it has just a sign i minus 1. There's no plus 1, in other words. Okay? So you see that the two operations okay, produce almost an identical result, which means having alpha prime present and alpha missing. However, they do it with a minus sign different. Okay? Is this clear? So if needed, try to, 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 to reconsider this again. And this shows that this is equal to minus that. Okay? So whenever you exchange two um, A and A dagger with a different label, you can do it, but you have to pay a minus sign. Pretty much the same thing as exchanging two A daggers. Okay? Same rule. Okay? Still, there is a price of minus sign to pay. Uh, now uh, comes the uh, tricky thing. So when the two things are the same, there is not only a price of minus sign, but there is a one that is also uh, in, the, in, the, in the game. Let's see why. OK, so let us consider immediately the case now alpha prime equal to alpha. OK, so I want to consider the action of A alpha, A dagger alpha on one hand, and a dagger alpha, A alpha on the other hand. OK? Good. Now, uh, this acting on a certain state, alpha 1, alpha n. OK. First of all, what should I conclude about alpha and the uh, set of labels alpha 1, alpha n? Well, alpha uh, here cannot be in the list. Otherwise, I would get 0. OK? So two possibilities. Alpha belongs to the list, okay? Alpha 1, alpha n, then I get 0. Mm -hmm. Alpha does not belong to the list, okay? And then in the action of the first, I do get um, alpha, now in first position, then alpha 1, alpha n, okay? Then I have to operate with, this, with the next one. Well, for zero, I still get zero. For this second, I get this. But now you see destroying alpha after having created it immediately after uh, gives me alpha 1, alpha n. OK? So this object here, uh, when acting on a state alpha 1, alpha n, has two possible results. Zero if alpha is not there. OK? Uh, sorry, if alpha is there. Because it would create two times the label alpha. And simply uh, the same state, OK, if alpha is not in the list. All right? This is very simple. Now let us look at the second. Uh, the second distinguish two cases again. Suppose that alpha uh, belongs to the list. Uh, the other case is alpha not belonging to the list. OK? As in the second. Now, let's do the second first. Because if alpha does not belong to the list, then this object here would kill the vacuum, right? So this would give me immediately 0. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing that can be uh, done. I mean, a zero is a zero. This is not the vacuum, OK? The vacuum might be resurrected by a dagger, but the zero is a zero, OK? Good. So the second case is simple this time, and gets zero. What about the first? Well, the first tells me the following. Uh, I have to destroy uh, some alpha i. Evidently, if alpha is in the list, it must be in some position i. OK? So the first part means minus 1 to the i minus 1 
times the state where alpha i is missing. Okay? But then I have to recreate, okay, with this object in front. In order, however, to go there to that position, remember this is a state where I have a dagger alpha 1, then a dagger alpha i minus 1, nothing in position alpha i, again alpha i plus 1, a dagger alpha n, vac. Okay? Now I'm trying to add an extra a dagger alpha, which is the correct alpha i indeed, huh? but I add it here and I want to bring it there. How many minus signs should I pay? I minus 1, because it's this number of jumps that I have to make, okay? So the I minus 1 exactly cancels the first I minus 1, okay? So the result is now, again, the original state, because the I minus 1 is perfectly cancelled, okay? Is this clear? Again? Mm. Okay. The distraction of A alpha from position I costs a sign in general, uh, minus 1 to the I minus 1. However, luckily enough, the sign is completely eaten up by the corresponding creation of the object. I want to fill the hole that I have created, but the hole is in a certain position. And in order to bring this operator at that position, I should jump over many a dagger. Each jump, okay, by this prop property costs a minus sign, okay? So the total number of minus sign that I must pay to bring this there is i minus 1, okay? So the i minus 1 from here is eaten up by the i minus 1 from there, and you have, in the end, a plus 1 sign, okay? So the result is, again, the original state, okay? So notice... The sum, in, in both cases, if I do A alpha, A dagger alpha plus A dagger alpha, A alpha, and I act on any state, what I get? Well, in the first case, I get zero from there and the state from the other, okay? So I get the state. In the second case, I get the state from, 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 from this and zero from the other, okay? So I get the state. So in both cases, you see that the equation you get is always this, okay? One of these two operators is responsible for getting you the same state. The other one will give you zero. And which one gives you the state and which one gives you zero changes in the two cases. So if alpha is there, something happens. If alpha is not there, the opposite happens, okay? But in the end, the sum of the two acting on any state will give to you exactly the same state. Hmm? And th therefore, you realize that this must be equal to the identity, okay? So this is what I wanted to prove, that the anti-commutator in this case is just one. Hmm. All right? So it's an exercise of minus sign, labels present, not present, killed, okay? So it's a bit of, but, I mean, these things you do it one time now, okay? Then you learn as rules and you operate on these things in an almost automatic way, okay? So you know that you can move around this object, say daggers and A, by just the usual rules of uh, when you, every time I jump, I pay a minus sign. If I have to uh, exchange an A with an A dagger with the same label, I have to be careful. This is not only a minus sign, but there is a possible one, okay? Pretty much as in the uh, harmonic oscillator uh, exercise, except for uh, anti-commutators in place of commutators, okay? So the algorithm is pretty similar. And you can therefore kind of play with the objects uh, in a very uh, free manner, but remember uh, that there is anti-commutators now, okay? And for the rest, this uh, 
uh, objects in the way I have described uh, essentially encapsulate completely the properties of anti-symmetry that Slater determinants have in first quantization, okay? They do exactly what they are supposed to do. They create labels, they anti-symmetrize. If you exchange, you pay minus sign. If the label is not present, you get zero. They do exactly what they should do, okay? All right. One uh, object that is particularly um, noteworthy is this, this operator A dagger alpha A alpha, okay? Let us give a name to it. It's N of alpha. It's called number operator, number operator. What it does? Well, you see immediately, if alpha is not present in, in the list, okay? So suppose that I Uh, apply this object to a certain state. If alpha is not present, hmm, we'll give you, let's see, we have done it, right? This one. If alpha is not present, we'll give you zero. If alpha is present, it gives you one times the same state, okay? So this thing will give you, when acting on the same state, will give you zero if alpha does not belong to the list, and one times the same state if alpha belongs to the list. So in some way, this is like counting how many times alpha is present. Well, how many? Could be zero or one, okay? So it is a number operator. It's kind of something that doesn't change the state, simply counts. If alpha is there, it gives you just a one. If alpha is not there, it just gives you zero, okay? So it's a one zero counter, all right? That's the reason why it's called number operator. Now, for bosonic case, I must warn you, the state can contain the same label more than one time, okay? And in that case, this would really count how many times the alpha is present, okay? We'll do it uh, next time. For the Fermionic case, this how many times is zero or one, mm -hmm. because Pauli pro forbids from having the label more than once. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, if you uh, sum over all possible alpha, so if you do the following object, sum over all possible alpha n alpha, Mm -hmm. This object, when acting on any state, will give to you, as a result, simply n. It counts how many particles there are. Let me justify why, why this is so. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. Now, each one of them gives zero for all the alphas that are not present, and gives one for the alpha that are present, okay? The alpha will be different because there will be alpha one here, alpha two, and so on. But therefore, in this sum here, there are an infinite number of terms that will give you zero, but there are n terms, exactly the one with alpha one, alpha two, and alpha n, which will give you a one, okay? You sum those ones, and you get just n, okay? So this operator here, is nothing but the operator that describes the total number of fermions, okay, in the state. Now, this you might say, okay, this is trivial because after all it's n, it's fixed. But remind you that perhaps you have heard of uh, um, grand canonical ensemble, okay? In the grand canonical ensemble, you do not fix the number of particles, uh, which can fluctuate, hmm? And therefore, in some cases, it's useful to have an object that counts the number of particles, okay? Because this might be fluctuating from state to state, okay? So, I mean, just out, it's just a parenthesis. It's a very simple thing, it's just an almost trivial object, okay? The sum of all number operators is the number of particles operators. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? 
uh, should I tell you? Well, uh, still a few minutes. Let's, uh, let's adventure in the following thing. I have selected a certain basis alpha, and I have constructed with that basis a certain A dagger alpha, which does what I have written there. Mm? But what about if I select another basis, beta or whatever? How the new operators that I would form with this new basis are related to the old ones, okay? Because that's an important, uh, that's an important thing, okay? Now, <clears throat> so suppose that I, um, suppose that I do the following. I define now a new basis rather than alpha. Let me call it i, okay? i is not necessarily an integer. It's some label, or you could call it uh, beta, whatever, okay? Some other label. Well, this new basis is obviously um, always related to the old one. Now, how can you write the relationship between i and alpha? Well, one way is the following. Write this as identity times i. Now, the identity can be written in many possible ways. And one way is sum over alpha, alpha, alpha. OK? The usual trick, i. Now, you see that these objects here, OK, call them u alpha i, are some matrix elements, OK, of a matrix. Well, then this object is simply equal to sum over alpha, the alpha times u alpha i. Now, this matrix element are a matrix that change the basis from one orthonormal basis alpha to another orthonormal basis i. No surprise, they are unitary matrices, okay? Pretty much as you have when you change basis in a between orthogonal states in, say, R3, then you have uh, um, essentially orthogonal matrices, real one. Here you have complex objects, so they are unitary rather than orthogonal, okay? So you can prove, I mean, that, the, 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 that these matrices here are such that U dagger U is equal to the identity, okay? So please try to see uh, if this is clear to you. Okay, so you know what, what i is in terms of alpha. It's just a combination of alpha with some elements of a unitary matrix. Well, but then you know that a dagger i applied to the vacuum, hmm, which is this state, is equal to sum over alpha a dagger alpha applied to the vacuum times u alpha i, okay? I've simply rewritten this as a dagger alpha to the vacuum and rewritten this as a dagger i to the vacuum. So there are two objects now, the a dagger alpha for the first basis and the a dagger i for the new base. Evidently, they must be related. And you see that by acting on the vacuum, they are, I mean, they, they give you the same thing, and evidently there must be a rule, like a dagger i is equal to the sum over alpha of a dagger alpha u alpha i, okay? So if you change basis with a certain unitary matrix uh, u, okay, like here, like in the first line, then the corresponding uh, operators that create uh, the new basis is related to the old one by the same matrix, the same matrix U. Okay? Um, obviously, uh, you can take the adjoint of this, for instance, huh? and to, um, you can prove that UI is equal to the sum over alpha of A alpha. Um, 
u uh, star alpha i. OK? This is just by taking the adjoint of the first. So both a daggers and a are transformed into this way. Uh, now, perhaps I still have some uh, spare minutes, yes, to tell you one particular basis that is often used, well, or sometimes, especially to write the operators, hmm? uh, is the famous real space basis, okay? After all, that is a reasonable basis that you can start and, and be willing to use. You know, it's a little bit pathological. They are uh, localized things, so in some sense, uh, they do not have uh, a norm that is finite, but still, they can be used to express any uh, uh, wave packet, okay, by appropriate integral. Pretty much as the plane waves are also a little bit pathological, but they are good as basis state to express in Fourier transform things, okay? So in the same spirit, the localized states are useful. Hmm? And uh, you can write the, the, the relationship between um, the localized states and any other state. So for, for, first of all, if i is a localized basis, the corresponding operator, a dagger i, is given a special name, okay? It is called field operator, okay? So whenever I uh, create a particle at position r and spin sigma, I call that particular a dagger i, I call psi dagger sigma r. The notation is slightly different, but it's almost universally used. That's the reason why I, 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 I introduce it now like that. These are called field operators. They should not be confused with wave functions in first quantization. So it's not the wave function of a single particle. It's an operator. It's like the A dagger. You see there is a dagger, by the way. Mm? So it's not uh, just psi, the psi that we have introduced since the first lecture. is nothing but the creation operator for creating a particle in a certain position with a given spin, all right? So it's the creation operator associated to this particular choice of basis. Uh, but clearly, <clears throat> by the same, by the same uh, reasoning we made here, we can, make, we can find relationship between this and any A dagger that we might want, okay? Let us, let me repeat for you the, uh, the, 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 the idea. The idea is once again that R, single particle state, I'm trying to repeat for you this, okay? Is equal to sum over alpha of alpha alpha uh, R and sigma, okay? But this is nothing but the sum over alpha of alpha. Let's see. I do have some um, wave function here, uh, phi alpha star, because this is, is really the star of the wave function, times a delta function for uh, the spin of alpha and sigma. So times delta, sigma, sigma alpha, okay? So this is simply the relationship between position eigenstate and generic eigenstate alpha. You have to know the wave function of the uh, generic eigenstates and then the relationship is like that, okay? Now, this is just psi dagger sigma r, applied to the vacuum. This is a dagger alpha applied to the vacuum. And therefore, what you have is that this is equal to the sum over alpha, this times phi alpha star r, delta sigma sigma alpha. And you immediately see that this object have to coincide, okay? 
So the field operator is nothing but a sum over all possible alpha of a dagger alpha weighted with the wave functions of the alpha states, okay? And obviously with the, uh, with the same spin, okay? As the one you want to create, all right? So it's a rather, uh, I mean, it's an operator, first of all, so it's not a wave function that you plot. Uh, and in principle, uh, it's not clear from what I have told you uh, till now what is useful for, okay? It will be useful because we will see that in terms of it, it's very simple to write uh, the, the uh, Hamiltonian in second quantization, okay? But we will see this, I would say, next time because I realize that the formal machinery is kind of dry and heavy and perhaps uh, rather new. So I don't want to uh, over, overdo it, otherwise uh, I kill you, okay? Good. So next time we will learn how to write the operators, not only the states, and then we will do also the bosonic case as an example. <laughs>